Hey everyone, welcome back to this exciting After Effects tutorial. Today we'll create a cool 3D animation that reacts to movement and light. Whether you're new to motion design or already have some experience, this step-by-step -step guide will help you build dynamic animations very easily. We'll go through everything from setting up your composition to adding effects and controlling the animation. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a fun and creative project ready to share. All right, let's roll the intro. Let's dive in. Start by opening After Effects and creating a new composition. I'll name it 3D Proximity Expression. As always, I'm using a full HD resolution with a frame rate of 30 FPS. Next, create a new solid layer and call it Background. Choose any color you like, then click OK. Now head to the Effects and Presets panel and search for the four color gradient. Apply this effect to your background layer and adjust the colors to something vibrant or subtle, depending on your style. This step is optional. You can create any background you prefer. Now let's start building the 3D shapes. First, ensure no layers are selected. Go to the toolbar and select the rounded rectangle tool. Make sure your fill is set to a solid color and your stroke is set to none. Draw a square by holding down the shift key to keep it perfectly proportional. If the anchor point isn't centered, right click the shape layer Navigate to Transform and choose Center Anchor Point in Layer Content. This step ensures precise transformations later. Rename this layer as Shape 01 and align it to the center of your composition. Now enable the 3D property for this layer by clicking the 3D layer icon. If you can't see this option, press F4 to toggle between switches and modes. Once the layer is 3D, press R to access the rotation properties then set the X rotation value to approximately negative 80 degrees. Adjust the layer's position using the arrows, which you can see here. Just click and drag. Zoom in if needed for better accuracy. To enhance the 3D effect, we'll switch the renderer. By default, it's set to classic 3D. Press the tilde key found next to the number one key to expand the composition panel to full screen and switch from classic 3D to cinema 4D. Depending on your version of After Effects, you may see a pop-up message. Simply click OK to proceed. Press the tilde key again to return to the standard view. Next, open the Shape Layer settings, expand the Geometry options, and increase the Extrusion depth to around 25 or 30. This adds a nice thickness to your shape. Let's zoom out, and I think I need to change the depth of the Extrusion. Let's go with the 30, and this is looking much better. At this point, your shape might look flat due to the absence of lighting. To fix this, right-click in the Composition panel, select New, and then choose Light. I recommend using a point light for this step. Adjust the light's position to illuminate your shape, highlighting its depth. Once the lighting looks good, duplicate the shape layer and position the duplicate beside the original. Since these layers are 3D, the Align tool won't work for this task. So, we have to align these layers manually one by one. This might take some time. I am working on a script that will align 3D layers together. I just need to fix a few things and it will be ready to use. Switch the camera view to top view using the drop-down menu in the composition panel. This perspective allows you to manually align the layers by dragging them into position. Make as many duplicates as you need, arranging them in a grid or any other desired pattern. I am fast forwarding this step to save some time. After positioning your duplicates, return to the active camera view and refine the layout as needed. Great. Now let's add some control to our animation. First, create a new null object and name it Target. Duplicate this layer and call the duplicate Controller. The Controller layer will be used to adjust and control the animation. Go to the Effects and Presets panel, search for Slider Control, and apply it to the Controller layer. Rename this slider to Max Y. This slider will allow us to define the maximum height the shapes can move, which we can adjust as needed. Next, duplicate the Max Y slider and rename the duplicate to range. 
This new slider will help determine how much the shapes will react based on the proximity of the target or light to the shape layers. Now, it's time to add some expressions to bring the animation to life. Select one of the shape layers and press P to reveal the position property. We'll use a custom expression to control the animation. You can download this expression from the link in the description. Once downloaded, copy the entire expression. Hold down the Alt or Option key and click on the Position Stopwatch icon. Paste the copied expression here. To apply the same expression to all the other shape layers, right-click on the Position property and choose Copy Expression Only. Then select all the other shape layers and paste the expression using Control plus V or Command plus V. Let's open any of the shape layers and confirm if the expression has been applied to it. It may look like this. Great. Now let's adjust the sliders to see the effect. Select the controller layer and increase the max Y slider value to a higher number. Similarly, increase the range slider value to around 550. This adjustment will give you a more noticeable movement for the shapes. Once set, position the controller layer off screen since we don't need to see it during the animation. Next, grab the target layer and move it closer to the shapes. You'll notice that the shapes react, but the direction may seem off. To fix this, go back to the controller layer and set the max Y slider value to a negative number, such as negative 180. Now the shapes will react as intended. For the next step, move the target layer to the position of the point light. Parent the point light to the target layer using the pick whip tool. This way, whenever you move the target layer, the light will move along with it. Let's add more lights and add some colors to it. Duplicate the point light and rename the duplicate ambient light. Open the light settings and change its type to ambient. Ambient light illuminates all the shapes uniformly, making them brighter. I noticed that my ambient light is parented with the target layer, so let's change it to none. Adjust the intensity of the ambient light to around 50% or whatever suits your design. Also, change the light's color to something subtle to create a balanced look. To further refine the appearance, go back to the original point light. Open its settings and experiment with the light color. Let's choose a pinkish hue for a vibrant effect. Now all my shapes look kind of pink and purple, so to fix it, we need to adjust the point light position. Toggle the full screen view using the tilde key and switch to the four view layout. This layout gives you four perspectives, top, front, left, and active camera. While it might look confusing initially, it's very helpful for precise adjustments. Use the top view to verify the placement of your lights and shapes. You'll notice that while the point light appears correctly positioned in the active camera view, it may be off in the top view. Adjust the light's position in the top view to ensure it aligns perfectly with the shape layers. Check the active camera view again to confirm everything looks as expected. Once done, switch back to the one view layout. Now let's tweak the background to enhance the overall composition. Select the background layer, go to the effects and presets panel and apply an invert effect to darken it. You can choose to create a different type of background depending on your preference. Minimize all layers to keep your timeline organized. Finally, it's time to animate. Select the target layer, open its position property and add keyframes to create a simple animation where the target moves from right to left. This movement will make the shapes react dynamically. If you'd like to add more complexity, you can introduce additional lights or layers. The key is to experiment and find what works best for your design. Adjust the max Y and range slider values to see how different settings affect the animation. I am leaving this project file on my Patreon page so that you can play with it and explore how it looks. If you notice that the edges of your shapes look too sharp, you can smooth them out, select any shape layer, open its geometry options, and modify the bevel style. Try options like Angular or others available and adjust the settings until you achieve the desired effect. For now, let's keep it set to None. With everything in place, your animation is complete. This concludes the tutorial. 
Remember, the techniques shown here are just a foundation. You can take these concepts and customize them to fit your creative vision. Thank you for following along, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, good luck and peace. Thank you.